Well, across the river from the Big Apple, the Big Orange, Syracuse, ready to take on the Bulldogs of Mississippi State. Time for the lineups, and let's join the legendary Frank Fallon. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Meadowlands for tonight's NCAA National Semifinal Game between the Mississippi State Bulldogs and the Syracuse Orange Men. Now, let's meet the starting lineups. For Mississippi State at forward, a 6'7 junior from Nashville, Tennessee, number 32, Dante Jones. For Syracuse at forward, a 6'7 sophomore from Detroit, Michigan, number 30, Todd Bergen. For Mississippi State at forward, a 6'10 senior from Myrick, Mississippi, number 20, Russell Walters. For Syracuse, at forward a 6'8 senior from Rochester, New York, number 44, John Wallace. For Mississippi State at center, a 6'11 junior from New Hebron, Mississippi, number 25, Eric Dampier. For Syracuse at center, a 6'8 junior from White Plains, New York, number 4, Otis Hill. Mississippi State at guard, a 6'3 sophomore from Long Beach, Mississippi, number three, Marcus Buller. For Syracuse at guard, a 6'7 junior from Woodland, New York, number 35, Jason Cipolla. For Mississippi State at guard, a 6'1 senior from Kennedy, Alabama, number double zero, Daryl Wilson. For Syracuse and guard, a 6'4 senior from Syracuse, New York, number three, Lazara Sims. And the coaches for Mississippi State in his 10th season, Richard Williams. For Syracuse in his 20th season, Jim Beheim. Before we get this one underway, let's go through the Packer points, the ones to look out for today, starting with Dante's Inferno. Young man has absolutely been on fire, Jim, MVP of the SEC, as well as the regional last week. He made 15 to 18 of the first points Mississippi State scored. He has got to come out on fire again today. Cold as Co ice. Cold as ice. That is the Mississippi State field goal percentage defense holding teams to 32.9%. Tremendous. Syracuse side, Billy, how about stepping up? Stepping up. Anytime a team is a Cinderella, they have guys that have played much better in the tournament than they did in regular season. Otis Hill and Jason Cipolla, two perfect examples. And big John returns for the Orangemen. He's done it all. He took 10 points in overtime to beat Georgia and hit the big winning basket against Kansas. He's put this team on his shoulders. What does he need to do today? Jim, I think he just needs to play his steady game. There's no reason for me to expect otherwise. It would be surprising if John Wallace had an off day. He's been playing that well all year. The only thing that kept him off the All-American team is the fact that three other guys in his conference were ahead of him. He made second team. They're all at home, though, for the Final Four, and Wallace is about to play the most important one of his career. Andre Patillo, Frank Scagliato, and Mike Sanzier get to officiate this first one. Tampier and Wallace ready to get it started. was a little bit off. Wallace took advantage of it. Lazara Sims, a senior, has had a big year. Dumps it in the Wallace. Bergen thought about it. Great this help by Bullock. Tenacious man-to-man -man defense of Mississippi State. Wallace cutting through. Jumper too strong. And Dampier pulls down the board. Wallace with a reach-in foul. Almost a clean steal. Jim, we've heard so much about the word depth in this Final Four. And Kentucky is the team that has it. One of the things that can ruin the fact that you don't have depth are fouls. Because all these teams come in healthy. That was a cheap and not a smart foul by John Wallace Earl. Other than Kentucky, the other three teams very similar when you talk about how deep they go. Absolutely. They cannot afford foul trouble. They came in healthy, but that's another way to sit a man down. And there's that 2-3 zone of Syracuse. Try to lob it over the top of it to Jones, and Bergen had him blocked out. Put a body on him and took Jones right out of bounds. That 2-3 zone, Jim, to start off with is back down inside the three-point line. 
Look for Jones to take a jumper early. He and Wilson have great perimeter range. Otis Hill having a big tournament. Flip shot, got it. First points of the final four belong to Otis Hill. You talk about stepping up. He stepped that one right over Dampier. Half hook. There's the 2-3 zone. Hill down in the middle. Wallace on a wing with Bergen. Look for the range by Wilson. Oh, Steps in. Ball up big time by Dante Jones. They talk about a 40-inch vertical leap. I'd have to question that. The young man <laughs> can get up. Those high socks are from high school. All the guys wore them in his neighborhood. And that's off Mississippi State. What a breathtaking start this is. He's looking for the lob behind the zone. Now Walter set screens, and there is Dante way above the rim. Walters doesn't have a lot of stats, but he plays hard nosed defense. Well, Walters influenced that misfire by Wallace. That pass thrown away by Bullard. Sims did a pretty nice job not reaching in on Bullard for the foul. It took his concentration away. Wilson was open for the jumper to beat the zone back down court. We saw Wallace shoot a jumper just inside the arc just a moment ago. He's developed a nice outside game this year. Hill. Trying to find the grasp, he comes out long the bullet. This time he hits Wilson. Good decision by Wilson, nobody under. Sam Pierce surrounded, finds Jones. Jumper, got it, three-pointer. And check the little step, Jimmy. Going to be all kinds of moves he, he is from in, this man. He is in his own zone, he's so much fun to watch. And he's doing a lot of talking down there as well, as is Bullard, particularly on the defensive end. Sims posting up Bullard, and he's got the size advantage to do that. Absolutely, Jim. Good call there, because that's what makes his zone effective, too. Sims and Cipolla are big out front. Bullard, three-pointer. He struggled during the tournament, but not on that one. His first attempt You're at the Final Four. Absolutely correct, Jim. He has not been shooting well, but he has a career three-point average above that of Wilson, so he can stick it. Wallace blocked by Dampier. Out to Bullard. Bulldogs have a chance to run. Big numbers here. Dampier coming. Jones just lays it in beautiful. 10-4. Mississippi State off to another big start. They talked about how important it would be to hit some early shots for confidence, and Bergen slams it at the other end for Syracuse. Now, now, Jim, the kids are playing to the crowd too much in this game early. Bergen turned and looked at the crowd. It was a great crossover dribble, but they've got to lock in and the job at hand. And Wilson should go ahead and find himself some space against this zone. He's lining up right with the players. Wilson. Take it away, charge. Pretty difficult against the 2-3 zone to make a move from 18 feet out and not get caught with a charge. You're going right into the defense. There you see Hill waiting on him. Man to man, maybe it works. Zone very difficult. What Wilson is doing, however, is he's making the pump fake, so guys that rush out him on the jumper are gonna have to play it honest. Sims, Bergen underneath, and Dampier. Syracuse needed that one. Ford lost the handle, no call. Wilson, three-pointer. Third three-pointer already for Mississippi State. One by Bullard, one by Wilson, one by Jones. Jimmy shooting 40% from three on the year. We saw him light it up in the regional against Connecticut. He's got great range on that jump shot. It's seven threes against the Huskies. They knocked out the one seed in the Sweet 16. They're gonna give Hill a shot from 15, 18 feet. Sapola hasn't touched it much. Now in the lane. Oh, somehow that comes out. That was halfway down. Tough break for Sapola. Dampier in there, the great shot blocker. He ends all drives inside for Mississippi State. Boy, they are surrounding this zone with three outstanding shooters. Something Kansas didn't have, Jim. They might have had Jock Vaughn's penetration and kick out, but this team with Jones and Wilson on the wings and Bullard up front can create a 3-2 matchup against the 2-3 zone. All right, Jones. 
That's a rebound, the first by Syracuse. Hill, good pass, get the assist to Sims. First time in the tournament I've seen Eric Dampier beaten down court by the opposing center. He just didn't get back in time. We'll see what they're doing to the zone, Jim. There's two men out front. Mississippi State's putting three out front, so they've always got an advantage. Over the top, Dampier, hacked by Bergen on the way up. And with that perimeter shooting they can get from Wilson and Jones, it can get pretty scary if you're not right there with them. Well, it can because somehow that brings the wingmen on in the back way out front. And obviously, this Mississippi State team, which is so well drilled, realized that. And when the wing came out, they threw right over the top of the lob with Dampier against the smaller Bergen. Dampier will shoot two. He's hit only five of 12 free throws during the tournament. 12 double doubles on the year for this young man. the tallest player in Mississippi State history and this tournament average is very similar to his regular season average was the number two high school center in the state behind Othella Harrington both of them turned out to have excellent careers Got him. and we reach our first break Wilson with seven points Seven by Dante Jones, Mississippi State up. Well, Mississippi State's first appearance at a Final Four for Syracuse, third in school history, 75, 87, and now this year. Seven early points by Dante Jones. They spread it around. Four of the five starters have already scored for the Bulldogs. And Jim, this rebound advantage seven to one. Uh, don't let that surprise you because Cincinnati had an eight-point rebound margin over their opponents. Then Mississippi State out-rebounded them 44-38. So they can get up on the boards. Bergen. Nice. Well, yeah. they dissected that defense. Second time today, Bergen has taken Dante Jones one-on-one -on -one with crossover dribbles. Beaten him badly. What a screening inside by Walters for Dampier trying to set up another lob. Wilson three. Forget, forget it, Jim. If the wingman does not come out and play him high, he'll score all day against that 2 3. Jimmy Beheim may be the first coach that has to make a decision in this game. How long can he go for it? Maybe show a little man to man and see how they'll adjust. Sepola. And that three rebounded by Walters. Another one short this time. Call of Syracuse underneath. Design fast break. The break will sit down outside the three. No way to defend him out there. Might have been able to hit into Dampier who was running on the break. Wallace three. He likes that from the top of the key. Well, Jim, that's what happens for a guy that develops his total game. You would have never seen that shot two years ago, maybe even last year. 18-13 Mississippi State. That's Wallace's first field goal. And Hill will be whistled for that one. His first. And there was a case where the wingman realized that Wilson was breaking out to the outside, left Hill isolated down inside. Good position for Dampier. So far, Mississippi State is really spreading the 2-3 zone. to Jones. Sims very aggressive on Walters outside, and there's two philosophies there. Do you guard a guy that you know is not going to shoot, or do you leave him alone? Syracuse obviously decided to guard him. Nice switch by Walters to help out. Wallace, two-pointer. Two straight trips. He's hit shots, a three and a two. Jim, I talked about Syracuse versatility, and there's what you have. See, Wallace is no longer just a low post player, so he's taking Walters out where he is at a disadvantage. Nice move, smart play by Wallace. There's the screen. Jones, two-pointer. Now with nine. Now all 
Rutgers is doing, Jim, against this zone is setting one screen after another. I really think a screen is something that ought to be in the stats. You know, they give you assists for making a pass. Why not a great screen for setting up a teammate? Walters does it as well as anybody in college basketball. And there's a foul on Wilson. Second time today, Sims has taken Wilson down inside where he has a big size advantage. Nice move. And that is the second on Wilson. 11.37 to go, first half. Mississippi State by five. Jim Beheim's second Final Four as head coach at Syracuse. 20th year running the program. 33 years in all involved with Syracuse as a player, assistant coach, and head coach. Billy, there's his win percentage. Well, Jim, nothing points out how good a guy's doing as the test of time. And there's uh, Jimmy in 20 years, right up there among the real leaders in the game. Hill got it to go over Dan Beer. Boy, he fought for that, too. Jim, what happened there is not great footwork, but Hill has such a wide body. Dan Beer couldn't get close to him. So good pump faking and good uh, concentration and patience by Hill. And Hill's having a nice game. Eight points. Eight of Syracuse's 17. Trying to run Jones on the baseline and get some screens for him. Walters, not usually an offensive threat. And that one retrieved by the Pickle Travel. Hill has made four out of five at the other end. Here we see Hill. Now watch his patience down inside. One pump. Two pumps, and then he puts it back up. Very nice job using that wide body. So, Syracuse with a three can tie it. Orangemen were down eight early. Sims, that does it. 20 all. How about that step up, Jimmy? Good call. I never would have expected Sims to take the three. I think it shocked Bullard as well. see kids looking up the crowd anymore, do you? There's no. a really focus in here. That little showmanship early on has changed a lot. Oh, boy, there's a good hit. Didn't finish it, though. Sims with the rebound, snaps it. Sapola lost control of it. Jones pushed Sapola. Got away with Great it. Great hustle. And they could have called that. Yeah, they could have called that foul easily. Same pass by Sims to open it up. Hold outside, take away the hoop. So that call goes against. That's going to go. Walters. Against Walters. John yeah. Walters. His his first. Now what what we're seeing John Wallace do is recognize right away what the defense is giving him and, and what they're not, and he realizes he can take Walters if he starts out from 18, 20 feet with the jump shot or off the dribble. It's a good move on his part. Why this team is so tough to defend. That ball kicked. They'll reset the shot clock. Syracuse on a 10-2 run to tie it. 20-20. And Jim, they're shooting over 50%. When you consider the fact that nobody is shot any better than 40%, and that was Georgia back in the SEC semifinals, that is quite a percentage. And holding the likes of Kentucky, UConn, Cincinnati to a season-low field goal percentage. Hill for the lead. And that so is it's his range, Jim. 15 feet. Dampier will have to play in there. Great comeback by Syracuse. Syracuse, 10 and a half minutes into this game, has not turned it over. Not once. Nice double team out of the zone. Dampier, Walters. Only his seventh and eighth points of the whole tournament. Walter's the only man in the starting lineup not averaging double figures. He's right at five a game. It's not what they expect from him. Big points. Bergen left open. Off balance. Comes back to him, though. He's had uh, just a miserable time from the field in the first four games of the NCAAs and from the free throw line. But Jimmy's been on the boards very well for this team as the third rebounder. And Walters, two straight trips, yes. And that gives Mississippi State the lead again, 24-22. Nice hands and confidence to throw to a man that's not a high score. 
First subs getting ready to come in the game for both teams. Bergen. Jimmy's Out not to set. Walters. Bullard, Dampier, mishandle it. Jim's maybe a little low. Yeah, you don't want to throw the ball down at a big man's ankles. You want to throw that up high. There's the replay. Nobody on Walters. He's really hustling to get down court, beating the defense. There's the catch. He watched it right into his hands. Good fundamental move, and then powers it on in. And Whit Hughes has come in for Dante Jones. J.B. Reef Snyder for Syracuse, number 32, as well as Marius Yanulius, number 42. Handling the ball now. Yanulius can shoot from the outside. Nice hedge move by Walters. Hughes bumped by Reef Snyder, who will be called for that one. So we're just under eight minutes to go in the first half. Jim Nance, Billy Packer, courtside. The final four. Mississippi State shooting over 60%, but the turnovers, well, six by the Bulldogs and a clean game so far for Syracuse, although Syracuse trails 24-22. Jim, on the year, Mississippi State, and this is really surprising as solid as a ball club as they are, they've turned the ball over 69 more times than their opponent. So that's one area of weakness. And there you can see, you're matching up a little bit more out of the 2-3 zone than they were at the very start of the game. Dante Jones is still on the bench with Hughes replacing Walters jumper. Boy, bonus points. Six for Walters. Big Country, they call him. It was a man named Big Country, Brian Reeves, who played in last year's Final Four. They, in fact, got there right out of this arena, winning the East Regional at the Meadowlands. Oklahoma that, State. That is not something Jim Beheim ever would have talked about in any pregame talks. What are we going to do with Walters' jump shot? I can assure you. And taken away. There's the turnover. Wilson. Well, that was a key call there. Remember, Wilson already with two, but they'll call that on Yanulis. Wilson too low to the ground. A young man who has just been outstanding. He was all regional last week. Season and career three-point leader for this team. All SEC player. Terrific backcourt performer. Fifteen foul on Syracuse and Sims collides with Wilson. And for Sims, that's his first. Jim, there was another one of those exhibits of sportsmanship. Sims picking him up. I, I, this has been the finest display of sportsmanship I've ever seen in an NCAA tournament, the way these kids are conducting themselves. I don't mean just in this game, but having watched so many over the course of the last couple of weeks. Nice swinging of the ball, but Wallace was waiting on it. That's why the matchup is taking place right now. Hughes probably not going to take the shots that Jones would take. Easier to match up against this lineup. Reef Snyder reached around to force the steal. A good play. He gets it at the other end. Jumper short. Dampier looked like he almost took it off the rim. Had no chance to go in. That's why it wasn't goaltending. Skip pass. Bullard. A three. Got it. Well, he's not off with a three-point shot anymore, Jim. That's two in a row. You know, he has had a sprained right elbow that's impacted his shooting during this tournament. And Mississippi State has already knocked down five threes in seven attempts. He did not score a point against VCU. There's a foul inside, little body contact. You see, Jim, it had no chance to go in the basket, was never in the cylinder, and therefore not goaltending. Dan Beer was right there with it, wasn't he? Neat angle. Bullard collecting his first. Hill returns for Syracuse. And Mississippi State has run off nine unanswered. Hill, he got it. That was Washington into the ball game. You can see both coaches. Again, we point out they don't have deep benches, but very effective benches. Remember what Washington did against a Cincinnati. Uh, maybe is the guy that turned that game around when Dampier was on the bench with foul trouble. Now we're talking about Tyrone Washington, who uh, had seven points, four rebounds, and a block. Coming in off the bench against the Bearcats. He commits that one. 
And Hill stops that nine point streak. Tyrone Washington, 6'10 freshman. Jim, one of the reasons that coaches get hot in the tournament, Richard Williams did not have him play one minute against Connecticut and then was able to pull that string against Cincinnati where he played so well. Dante Jones has come back in also. Washington kind of gave up on that one. I may have thought a teammate was backing him up. He should have gone after the ball, though. You can never assume there's a man behind you. It was an easy get. Yes, it was. He should have just kept right on running. Nice ball fake by Sims. Beautiful. Pass. Jones rejects it, though. Dante Jones out of nowhere to take away Bergen's dunk. And that was some luck. Tie up. The arrow belongs to Mississippi State. This is a sensational pass. Look at Burgundy fingers. I've got this all myself. Jones from nowhere blocks that ball. I'll take it back, Jim. Maybe he does have a 40-inch vertical leap. <laughs> As Bergen can get up in the air as well. Or more. This is a nice move by Mississippi State going to center. Jones got it inside quickly, but a travel called on Washington. Dante Jones snapped it inside. It looked like a certain two coming up with the freshman travel. 29-23. Look at the turnover margin. 9-1. to one. And Jim, now it's Jones on Wallace. Now see if Wallace tries to post Jones up a little bit. He's got size on him. There's the screen. Here he is, right down inside. Hill, big step. Great footwork by Hill. He is having some kind of half. 13 for Otis Hill. More than half the Syracuse total. Jim, he's a junior, but remember, he redshirted a year. So we're talking about another fourth-year player in the Syracuse program. And the field, down a couple, but that one's off the mark. Sims always looking ahead. Hill again with that footwork and scores again. 15 for Otis Hill. He's using Washington, and Richard Williams understands it, and here comes Dampier right back in the game. That zone now backing up. Too deep. Wilson left open for him. And Bergen battles for the rebound. Sends lob inside for two to John Wallace. Wallace, Bullard hug each other. Bullard knowing that man's too big for me. And a 20-second timeout called by Mississippi State as Syracuse storms back with seven unanswered of its own to tie it. Beautiful pass by Sims from the outside. Watch the arc on this ball to give Wallace an opportunity to plant and go up above the smaller man. Bullard realizes he's overmatched here. He just tries to use a body, but Wallace has him by a good two feet. Sensational pass by Sims. Pass couldn't have been any better. Sims, who ranked sixth nationally in assists this year and has really been a fine for this team after three years on the bench and another year redshirting. He got his chance and one year to do it, and he's helped direct this team to the Final Four. And with his dad's death and the bad year last year, he thought about not even playing any more basketball. A terrific job on his part this year. They couldn't do without him. Ball knocked loose. It was Sims who knocked it away from Jones. Sims tipped it out, but right to the Bulldogs. Miller. He's got Wilson on a wing, goes to the left, and said, bad pass. And another turnover. Bad pass. That was a turnover that was unforced. Mississippi State and Syracuse are tied. 11 turnovers committed by Mississippi State. Kentucky, UMass next. Kentucky ranked number one five weeks this season. UMass 10 weeks during the regular season. The parents of Dante Jones, John and LaFonda from Nashville, Tennessee. His father's a barber and his mother manages the Kenny Rogers Chicken Restaurant. Where Dante worked for a period of time when he dropped out of high school. And I'm sure he's not going to have to worry about going back there unless it is to buy a few restaurants. Yanulis off the mark on a three, and we've got another sub in. Bart Heisch, freshman point guard right here for Mississippi State. At eight, very key first half points against TCU. Dampier on the pass inside from Wilson. Breaks the tie. Richard Williams, I'm sure, talked to his club during that timeout. 
to say, hey, guys, we're getting away from our game plan. Let's go back inside a little bit. Too many fancy passes, too many outside shots. Sims, Hill, that time it didn't drop. But the only thing that hasn't gone well for Hill was that one. And Sam here again got a pass too low. Jim, the pass is a bounce pass to a big man. That's not there. The lob's for him. We'll see the pass. Going on in the inside, there's Dampier beating his man easily. But that's the second time on a fast break. Here you see it again. You notice the lead hand that Dampier gave as a target for the passer? Real good technique. But you don't want to throw bounce passes on the break to a big man. Get him the ball up high around the basket. Bergen with Walters on him. To the line for a couple. Bergen will shoot two. He's made only five of his last 19 free throws. Coming up, Pennzoil at the half. Pat Quinn, George, Coach K, Coach Herrick. All their first half analysis, plus the Chevrolet Player and Coach of the Year announcements coming up on Pennzoil at the half. Walters collected his second on the foul of Bergen, who now drops back to five of 20. Since the first round, he hit all four against Montana State, but has uh, really been wayward since. That stroke looked pretty good. And Jim, you can remember over the years, people say Syracuse a bad free throw shooting team. Not this year, they're over 70%. Here comes a trap for the first time out of the zone. Nice nice beat it. Walters lost control of it, but Bullard is there. Look out, Safari with the steal. Sims on the right wing, back to Bergen for the lead. It will not be in the stat sheet, but give that two points to Jimmy Beheim. That was his call. Great jump out of the out of the half court zone. Another one. Jones right back to him. Walters on the blocks. Heisch in the right spot. 140 to go, first half. Syracuse leads 32-31. How about Bullard pulling everything back out, get his team settled down, and then has it turned over. Yeah, Sims forced it, and now Sapola steals it. They got the numbers again. Bergen back out. Sims has to take it. Three-point lead. Terrific job, and Jimmy Beheim saying again, let's go full court against him. Now, the reason Jimmy's doing this also is his team won't be tired because he only has a minute to go, so he'll have the halftime to rest. Terrific coaching move on his part. This is a mistake-prone Mississippi State team. Jones too long on the three. Dampier, though, resurrects the possession. Bullard for the tie. Yes, 34 all. Under a minute to go and a half. The turnover margin here today, 13 to 1. But the game is tied. That's, that's a stat you won't ever suggest again, Jim. A tie ball game that with many, one team and have uh, that kind of a differential and turnover assist. Give them that many extra possessions. Wallace in traffic. And there was a double team on John that wasn't effective because it gave him the seam to turn back against the grain. Mississippi State can hold for the last shot of the half. Jim now said, Bayheim now says, bring my zone back down in because he knows they want to hold the ball. See if he jumps them with about six to eight seconds to go. Now with 10, tough pass, Bullard saved it. Seven to go, Walters turn around. Wow, eight unexpected points from big country. And just before the half, Sapola, do time. they count it? No, no not in time. So, Russell Walters with eight first half points. The last hoop tied it. This one didn't count. Not quite in time. You can see Cipolla without question does not have the shot off. Ball still in his hands. That's the end of the first half with the score. Mississippi State 36, Syracuse 36. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA basketball tournament continues after this message and a word from your local station. Biggest lead was three, and the halftime tie is the sixth tie of the game. Let's check Billy's analysis. How about Dante's Inferno? Well, it's not an Inferno, Jim, but he is playing very well. But he has not scored, Billy, since 12 minutes remain in the first half. Had an effect. You can see cold as ice, but look at what Syracuse is doing. 52% shooting. Amazing. Stepping up. 
And this is the one that's on target. The reason Syracuse is where they are is Hill's 15 points. And finally, Big John returns. Wallace. Exactly what we expected out of this guy, a solid first half. All right, we'll get back for the second half. Game one of the national semifinals continues after this message and a word from your local station. Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA national semifinal game is sponsored by Genuine Chevrolet. Bud Light. Sprint Business. And by Kemper Funds. All right, Billy, before we get the second half started, uh, Mississippi State shot 64%, and show us one reason why. Well, here you see the ball on the outside to Wilson. It's going to go in here. Wallace has had to come all the way over to help, and watch what happens with Dante Jones. Opposite of tracks against a zone that wants to come over and try to play the postman. Dampier hits outside. Jones early on, buried to three. Now let's take a look at it in real action. Ball goes inside. Now it attracts the zone. Dampier realizes it, throws opposite. Jones hits the jump shot. Excellent play by Mississippi State. Some of the halftime stats, if you're wondering how you can be tied by turning it over 13 times versus well, only one, show us, Billy. Well, two things. Rebounds, offset, and field goal shooting percentage. Jim, one of the strangest halftime stat sheets I've seen in a long, <laughs> really long time. If you said to me before this game, that Mississippi State was going to have 13 more turnovers and Syracuse was going to shoot over 50 percent. I'd say Syracuse leading by 14 points. That's not been the case. Yeah, game tied. Otis Hills 15 leading the Orangemen. Michelle Tafoya. Oh. Too strong tells us that at halftime Otis Hills right wrist is shooting him was bothering him a bit after going seven out of nine from the field in the first half. So he may have gotten a little nick there late in the first half. Yeah, and if you're an assistant coach, uh, let it keep hurting. 15 big points. A lot of cross-court skip passing here now by Mississippi State. Walters, not that time, Dampier picks it off the floor. And the Bulldogs with the first points of the second half. Jim, one of the things I think Mississippi State should try to attack early in his second half against that 2 3 is putting a man on the foul line. Hit the ball right down inside and then bang down inside to Dampier. They haven't attacked the zone in that area at all. Wallace back in and out to the line. They call that one on Dante Jones. Walters it, turning around, and there's Dampier with those great hands he has going down and putting it back up inside. One of the premier centers in college basketball. Jones picking up his first. He, again, had nine first-half points, but scored last with 12.01 to go in the first half. Now John Wallace. One of the real refreshing stories about a guy just two days before the NBA draft Making a decision. Very calculated. Had some workouts with NBA teams, but never did have an agent. So consequently, he was allowed to come back and be, have his eligibility. And that foul goes against Syracuse. Otis Hill is his second. Kind of interesting. What we see right now is that Syracuse is playing out on the perimeter in their 2 3 zone matching up that leaves Dampier almost one on one with Hill inside that'll be a problem for Hill a lot of room for Dampier inside see Wallace almost playing like a matchup against Jones opposites attract Dampier gets a hit. Boy, Jones way off on that one he wanted a call yeah he wanted a call hit on the hand Sepola three-pointer. Good job by Otis Hill. Just a shocker rebound. He wasn't able to catch it, but he shocked the pack and knocked the ball loose. Nice job. Pick and roll for Wallace. Sims missing on three. Jones skies for the board. Jim, we're not seeing a lot of smiles on Jones's face in quite a while. Lillard in and out from three-point land. Mostly scowls on his face. I think you need to get change him, from last you need to get week, him huh? going again. You need to get some points yep. from, from that man. Throw some coals on the Inferno. Very nice. Bergen and Syracuse, one point up. 
And they continue to shoot an outstanding percentage against this team. Here we see the 2-3 zone. Now, they're matching up a lot more with it now than they were in the beginning of the game. That's why the perimeter shooters are not wide open. Bullard steps in. Got a good-looking shot today, that's for sure. Absolutely, Jim. Perfect stroke. He's hit him from the outside. That's that short, medium range. A lot of college players will have either the layup or they'll have the long shot, but not many guys have that inside game at 15 feet. Yanulis for Sapola. Sapola 0 for 4 from the field. Was dressed down by Jim Beheim when he pulled up on that two-on-one fast break for the jump shot. He wanted that ball in Sims' hands. Hill really spreading out in the low post. On the drive. Eight on the shot clock. Hill. And a nice touch by Mississippi State. They say Walters touched it last. Well, Walters was right in the fact that Wallace came over his back. That's why he had to touch the ball and go out of bounds. Post up again by Sims. Bergen beat Mike this time. He was all set for that three. You can see the problems that Sims possesses when he goes down inside. He's so much bigger than Wilson. Everybody collapses, and that gives room for the outside jumper. See, nobody on the foul line, Jim. They can't pump it down inside. Damn here went up for it, but just led too much. Syracuse leads 42-40. Wallace from the box. Uh, John Wallace wanted that one yeah. back. He, he says, I got to make that yeah. shot. He, and he will most times. Oh, offensive foul on Dampier, who was trying to post up down low. That's just his first. You can see him down the blocks. Hill hustling. Job, job on the inside. Dampier bangs him, and Hill does a little acting out job and gets by with it. He's got a big, strong body. Syracuse in better shape with Reese Snyder able to come in for Hill as opposed to Washington, who seemed a little bit out of character in that first half. Not that Reese Snyder tore it up, but he's got much more experience in that position. Seeing some banging with Hill and Dampier inside. All right, Syracuse comes out. First break of the second half. Orangeman lead by two. Jim, Jim, here's the problem that Sims is causing. Now watch how Jones turns his head when the ball's in the low post. Bergen will take off, and you'll see Wallace go ahead and set a screen and watch what Sims does for him. There's Jones stuck down inside. He's lost his man. There's the screen by Wallace. Bergen hits the three. Excellent offense by Syracuse. Roy Williams, one game away from this Final Four. Syracuse beat him in the West Final, 60 to 57. Roy Williams would like to have had a couple of those jump shots against that zone that we just saw Bergen hit. The only thing that separated him from being here. See where Walters is playing? There's where, there's where Mississippi State can attack. Put the ball right in the center. Walters doubled up this time. And Bergen out battles him for the rebound. It's amazing how Syracuse is making Walters be an offensive player today. Excellent strategy on their part. He's got to learn to catch it and throw it out quickly. Hill. Over the back. Has to be. But that was some rebound. We talked about people stepping up. Otis Hill has been outstanding in this NCAA tournament. We're talking about a young man, 22 minutes, 15 points, two against Montana State. Drexel, he gets 16 and 8. 19 and 11 against Georgia, and 15 and 6 against Kansas. Really picking up his game. He hasn't scored in this half, though. Jones, been a long time, and that's one that he really needed to get that energy going on the rest of that team. Jim, I can tell the score of the game by looking at his face, Dante Jones's face, as he plays on the court. When he's got the smile, they're smoking. When he's frowning, they're not doing so well. He now went seven, 17 and a half minutes without scoring. Well, it's neutral right now, and it's a close game, 42-42. Stepped in for the 
two. Now Mississippi State looking for the lead again. Oh, Buller just bounced it off his leg. Now here's a face you can see. This is a tie score face, Jim. This is a tie score oh, face. Okay. You know? Oh yeah. When he has the frown, they're behind. This is the tie score. It's 42-42. You get him in the lead, and you'll see that smile. That's going to be my stat for this game. The man who was the MVP of the SEC tournament down in New Orleans, and then the most outstanding player of the Southeast Regional. Jim, have we ever had that trifecta? A tournament MVP, a regional MVP, and a Final Four MVP? I don't know. Sims three-pointer. And there's Jones. Beatenbergen. Good piece of work on the boards. Second leap is the one that did it all. Look at that bounce pass. And Walters scores off of it. What a bounce pass from midcourt by Dante Jones. The difference, Jim, is the big man was stationary. The bounce pass works in that case, but not when he's on the move. Great play by Jones. Syracuse uses its 20, its second half 20. Now watch, see where Walters is? He's stationary, almost like a guy ready to feel the ground ball. That's the difference between a big man being able to catch the bounce and what we saw earlier on the run. And he shakes his head and said, I can't believe it pass myself. His 28 against Kentucky down in the Superdome probably only exceeded as far as a performance, a better performance, by the 36 he got last summer. He had to go to summer school oh, to get his 30, eligibility. 36 credit hours. And he passed 36 credit hours to gain eligibility for Mississippi State this season. And he is talking to Bergen right now. Syracuse has gone now over three minutes without a field goal. Reef Snyder has come back in. Sepulveda also. Foul called against the Orangemen. It, it is no I three seconds. Gonna, I think it's gonna be Wallace on a little shuffling of the feet, Jim. But I think it's really time now for Syracuse to get John Wallace into the offense. Yep, that was a travel. I missed that. Now 13 to go. 44-42 Mississippi State. Bob Dampier comes down to the floor with it. Smart play by Wallace, not to try to block that. But Syracuse should not forget number 44. He needs to get in the offense. Bergen, tough shot. Got the roll, though. Beautiful jump stop. He looks off balance almost every time he shoots. He creates it. Creates interesting shots for sure. See how almost like a Stevie Thompson type. Yeah. Bullard inside, no play there. That's yeah. another turnover. Bullard created the turnover before he made the pass. The decision created the turnover. 16 to two on turnovers now. Sapola scores. Nice play by Sapola. He realized Dampier was out of position. Pump faked him and went by. Dampier may be getting a little tired. Richard Williams going back to that bench. Sapola's first points. Jones. Dampier trying to tip it out. Right to Sims though, who spins away. That'll send Bergen to the line. Jim, so many point guards will not control themselves on the break like Sims did there. That was tremendous judgment to give Bergen time to fill the lane. Near the conclusion of every NCAA tournament game, we select the genuine Chevrolet most valuable player of the game from each team. To date, Chevrolet has contributed almost five and a half million to the scholarship funds of America's colleges and universities. That was the third on Walters and Bergen to shoot a couple with Syracuse leading 46-44. This is always exciting with Bergen on the line with what's happened to him lately, but he hits it. To tie up, put the situation here, put him up four. Well, knocked them both down, so Bergen at the line, 48-44, Orangeman, 11-45 remaining. Syracuse on top in this first semifinal. Next, it'll be Kentucky and Massachusetts, Billy. Jim, the great Houston alumnus, Sajjar, it will have to go back to 1983 <laughs> again. Houston, Louisville, number one, number two in the nation. The last time we saw that, expect
some explosion. It's not Gibby one. 86. What call? Duke, Kansas, AP. All right. But it's a lot like 83, that's for sure. Yes, it is. It is very similar to that Louisville-Houston semifinal, all the buildup for that. Absolutely. Tyrone Washington has come in. There he is. Picks up the loose ball, knocked loose by Reed Snyder. Out of his element today, but Richard Williams needs minutes out of this young man, not points. I'm surprised they're going to it. Just let him get some minutes in the game. Reed Snyder rattles it out. Jones skies, Wallace is on his back, so Wallace collects his second. And for Syracuse, that's team foul three. Jim, the second time in the last two minutes, Jones beat Bergen on a double, double jump. There you see Massachusetts warming up out in the lobby. Wilson may have gotten away with a walk. Jones short on the three. He glided to the left on that one. Good decision. But that zone's really matching up. Not a lot of easy shots. Notice every time they swing that ball, there's somebody waiting on the shooter. Wilson. Last touch by Syracuse. So they'll get another chance on this possession with 10.33 to go in the game. Jim, there is one answer against the way that Syracuse is matching up, and that is to put a man on the foul line. They're matching up against his zone. It looks like a 2-3 to start. But they're matching up where the shooters are. There's the opening right in the center. That'll change that matchup. They really don't have a guy to put in there. They could put Jones in there. Fuller just took his eye off of it for an alarming 18th turnover versus only two. And Zampier will come in as the freshman goes back to the bench. Jim, as I said earlier, that's the only stat about this team that jumps out at you. The fact that they had 69 more turnovers than they did assists coming into this game. Everything else had been solid. And off the Bulldogs. And this team, Jim, has not been behind in the NCAA tournament before today. Except for their first round game. They had a little scare, actually, against VCU, Wallace. Picks up the loose ball as Bullard took his eye off of it. Oh, yeah. Reeves, Reeves Snyder hit Wilson in the back of the head. He's got to be careful there. 20-second timeout and a wise one. Richard Williams, 10th year as head coach, calls the 20-second timeout. Shot goes up. Good, powerful rebounding, and then lose the ball. Reef Snyder coming in, and you know, Reef Snyder and Hill, Jim, average 18.5 points, 8.8 .8 rebounds a game. So they really share the position, and there's that push against Wilson, and Reef Snyder got by with it. Even with three officials, they don't catch it all. This is kind of a new position for this team. They've now almost watched four minutes elapse without a field goal, but in their first round game against Virginia Commonwealth, this team trailed by one with six minutes remaining, and then Daryl Wilson got hot, scoring 12 of the last 16 for the Bulldogs. They pulled out that victory, but they never trailed in Lexington, not for a minute. And here again, the 2-3 matched up. Nobody in the center to break up that matchup. And there's Wilson, the one who brought him back against VCU in round one. It's that shot to bring him within four. 50-46. A lot of guys playing a lot of minutes out here in this game, Jim. Stamina will be a problem, but it should be equalized a little bit. Dampier got that little rest he needed. Now he's got to bang against Reese Snyder for a few minutes while he'll rest. And I think a big advantage to Syracuse on that, the way Washington has played so far today. Bergen. Dampier locking out Reese Snyder. Wilson open. That's the way to use your head. <laughs> Wilson wants another jump shot. Yeah, he's setting up for it over there. Sure is. They got him open. Now, now they come in on him quickly. Converge. He won't let him take it away this time. Dan Pierre, though, has it slapped out. And they call the foul on Sims. Jim, remember last week we had this ball club talking about Mississippi State 
and they were so fresh in legs, mind, and spirit. Today is the first time I've seen any sign of fatigue in this basketball team. Otis Hill for Reef Snyder. They took on a very deep Connecticut team, a very deep Cincinnati team, but seemed fresher at the end than their opponent. Today do the not. This is only the third free throw attempt for the Bulldogs today. Well, that's another reason when you turn it over as much as they have, you lose a lot of opportunities to go the line because you don't make somebody guard you. And it's only been Dampier at the line. He's made all three attempts. It's an interesting form, Billy, the way he flips it off his wrist. Perfect, though, for the fourth time. And a six-point lead has been reduced to two. Well, we ought to say as close as this game is, remember one thing. Syracuse last three losses in the NCAA all came in overtime. They're used to close games down the water. And pushed by Walters. His fourth, number four on big country. The medal lands in New Jersey for the final four with Mississippi State, a five seed against the four seed out of the West Syracuse. In fact, the five seed hadn't made it this far since Iowa. Now, there have been sixes and higher who made it, but the last time a five made a Final Four was Iowa in 1980. 1980. As a matter of fact, that team there, Billy, really, there's never been a four or a five in the championship game, but that will change here in New Jersey. Walters out. Well, they're going to try to steal a couple of minutes with Hughes here to come back fresh. Now, Otis Hill has had a nice rest. He's back out there now. So both teams with the short benches just trying to get some vital minutes. Jones posting up down low on Wallace. Wallace is up there with him. Dampier trying to tip it in. Dampier should have grabbed the rebound and made the putback. That was a very difficult tap back. And Wallace and Jones are talking all the way down the floor, but Wallace. Uh, Wallace, I'm sure, is saying, bring it back in yeah. here again, fella. Now Wallace is posted up on Jones. Same position, other end of the floor. And Wallace scores on him. And he'll talk to him again. Yeah. Hey, he's saying, bring he's, it down he's, here. He's saying, come on. Yeah, bring he's it He's waving at him. And they bumped a little bit on the inside. Syracuse basketball, 7.23 remaining. Here, here we're going to see the same play on the other end of the floor, but John Wallace, Big John, does return and then says, bring it down here, Dante. I'm ready for a post -up. Well, we've talked so much about the Bulldogs' sloppy play, but let's give Syracuse credit here for only two turnovers, Billy. Magnificent. Great Incredible. judgment on their part. Points off turnover, 18 to zero, Jim. Amazing. And the Kentucky team arriving just a moment ago. Jim, let me put something in perspective about that Kentucky team. In the NCAA tournament, they have scored 104 points off their bench. As an example, Mississippi State coming to this game was 39. You know where they are today? Still at 39. Not one point off the bench, only two in the entire game. Wallace, they'll shoot two. And there is what you do by bringing a man up to the middle against that type of matchup. John Wallace filled the gap. Obviously all conference first team. Set a record this year, Jim, in the Big East with six Players of the Week awards. Had a streak one time, five in a row, and he was the outstanding player at the West Regional. He broke Dave Bing's Syracuse single season scoring record. Dave Bing, formerly a roommate of Coach Jim Bayheim, and his mom, Vanessa, happy with that effort. Eight point lead, Syracuse's largest of the game, 56 48, under seven. And here's now they got Dampier coming up to fill the middle. There it is. That's what's available for this. Team. They got it. Dampier tips it in. Jim, that particular offensive maneuver will work with Jones filling that hole in the middle because you got a high low then with Jones and Dampier. It's the answer for this team. And Syracuse doing the same thing. Want to show you how to play against a 2-3 zone? It's a 
Paul on left hand missing. Dampier who has a double double, 10 points, 12 boards. Rips it away. A little slight change in defense by Mississippi State, seeing if Syracuse can hit something outside. Wallace went for the steal. Bullard fires a three. Hughes pushes it back out. Wilson, you can't leave him. Three pointer. That's real teamwork there. The extra pass. Bullard had the shot, didn't take it. Hit it to Wilson, who had a better one. Just like that, the eight point leads down to three, and a timeout called. It's a timeout called by Syracuse. Six minutes to go. Jimmy, we're going to see the ball coming down here. Here's one Mississippi State guy. Here's another. Watch, the ball will come out, and you hit the next open man for a better shot. Hughes out, Bullard over, Wilson up. Nice teamwork. Syracuse ball, the Orangemen with two timeouts remaining, leading 56-53. Jim, you see they're playing against the 2-3 zone, so Mississippi State making them play against the defense they've used so well. Big change by Mississippi State in their defensive alignment. Bergen, big shot. Knocks that off in a hurry. Back to a six-point margin. Richard Williams took a calculated gamble. That's three times down. They used the 2-3 zone. But here's the answer. Look at how Mississippi State putting that guy in the center. Dante Jones, there he is. Sims deflected the pass, and Syracuse almost got another steal. What they'll get out of this, Jim, is the ball will go into Jones. He'll be able to turn and hit down inside to Dampier, who will be covered one-on-one. -on -one. He stays down in the low post and ready to break up. Nice adjustment by Bergen against that zone. Five on the shot clock, and Syracuse steals it. It was Hill who forced it. Another turnover, Jim. It's absolutely amazing, the turnover differential between these two teams. 20-2. to two. Mark it down, five minutes to go. Syracuse with the ball and a six-point lead. Syracuse sure ought to know how to play offensively against the 2-3 zone. It's what they've used to get here. See it every day in practice. Because of the size of the perimeter players, this is not as effective a defense for Mississippi State as it is for Syracuse. And where did they throw it? Right in the middle of the post. Eight-point lead. Jones. Two players on him, but they'll call a foul. Now, Bergen is raising his hand because he doesn't want the foul on Hill. And they've got it on Hill, though, number four. Well, he tried. Jim, we'll see what I talked about. There's the 2-3 zone. See the man right in the center is John Wallace. And because the two perimeter players are small for Mississippi State, you can throw the ball in there much easier than you can against Syracuse. Dante Jones will get one more. The last few weeks, he said the ball has just felt great coming off my hands, but he's not having one of those blockbuster kind of a games. We've, we've been seeing 13 now for Jones. Well, I said for them to win, he has to be an inferno. He is not an inferno. He's just kind of like a smoldering fire, you know? Not a flame out, nope. but, but not an inferno. And there's Dampier anticipating. Was well, that a smart play or not? Dampier got over there realizing he's down. But right back. Another turnover. Wallace right side, Sapola left, three-pointer, big one. And just like that, Syracuse with the largest lead of the game, nine ahead, under four remaining. Hello, Georgia. Down in the corner, Sapola hits another big one. Timeout, Mississippi State. Taya Todd Bergen also having a huge half. He's five for five from the field in the second half. Syracuse up nine. That was a Mississippi State timeout. Each team left with two, two away from a one and one. And uh, Billy, this is some second half performance by Syracuse and, and Todd Bergen, too, who's five for five from the field, 12 points and a half. Doing a terrific job. We talk about guys stepping up. Otis Hill stepped up in the first half, Bergen in the second half. And right now, you see a lot of frustration 
on this Mississippi State face uh, of the ball club, Jim, and primarily because of the turnovers. They're really out of sync. Monte Jones trying to slide down. Bergen senses him coming. That was a foul on the wrist, no call. And Wallace rejects it. Looks like you're going to change the defense again, go back to the man-to-man, -man and pick up much higher. Wallace with that rejection, and now in no hurry with 3.14 remaining and a nine-point lead. Tough man-to-man -man here. And Wilson hand check. with the hand check, and that's his third, but just uh, one more, and he'll be shooting a one-on-one. -on -one. Richard Williams took over a program that was floundering. Had him in the Sweet 16 last year, and brought him here this year. Solid coach. What a remarkable success story he is. He's down on one knee now. And that'll send Bergen to the line. Good man, the foul. One and one for Bergen. The gym a little early for this, and you can see something that a coach has to make an adjustment on right away. They're calling hand checking very quickly. There's uh, Diane Williams on the left and Richard's mother on the right. Looking to expand to a double-digit lead. That free throw looks better all the time. Jim, here is an interesting thing. Here are some outstanding coaches that never played in college. Richard Williams leading the list. Rick Majerus, Roy Williams, Cliff Ellis, and of course the captain. Louis Conaseca, who also got his team to a Final Four. Louis and played a little, baseball. Of fame. Played played a little played baseball. baseball but yeah. And observed Coach Frank McGuire coach that basketball team when he's at St. John's. Jones, three-pointer. Wow. Had to have it. And he had uh, Wallace on him that time. Wallace uh, with a little uh, wry smile as he watches Jones go to the huddle. Timeout called by Mississippi State. Syracuse 66 58 252 remaining one timeout is all that is left for the Bulldogs It was nine years ago today Syracuse lost to Indiana in the national championship game down in the Superdome on a Keith smart jumper at the end That was nine years ago today And now they're trying to get back to that title game 252 remaining and an eight-point lead. They've got the press beaten. Sapola ahead. It's to ten. Jim, full court pressure. Great piece of coaching by Jimmy Bayheim, going over the top of the pressure, anticipating it, and going long for the home run with the lead. Jones over Wallace again. Not a good shot. That's a shot of panic, Jim. Much too much time on the clock to just throw him up there. Now Syracuse going over the top of these smaller guards. Wow, quick calls on the touches. And for Jones, his third, 222 remaining. Jim, you give up cheap fouls like that without playing solid defense, which we know this team is capable of doing. You not only put Syracuse on the line, but now you start talking about Jones' third. He's a guy you need on the floor to shoot the shots. One and one. We get another one. We talked about his weight for playing time. One year red shirt. Three years on the bench behind Adrian Autry and Michael Lloyd. Michael Lloyd, a man that when Syracuse lost him last year, he would have been back. They felt, well, where in the world is our point guard going to come from? Sims was the answer. Look at Jimmy Beheim picking up a little bit full court to make sure that clock runs. Way out there. Ball and three. Oh, good block out by Hill and Dampier. Walters put it back up. Too strong. Hill took Dampier right out of the play. Put him underneath the backboard. Sapola wide open. Saves it. And they put Sapola on the line for a one-on-one. -on -one. Coming up on the Final Four show, Pat, Quinn, George, Coach K, and Coach Herrick. They'll review this game, and we'll also hear from the winners and losers. Plus, 
One man has a shot for a million dollars in the Gillette three-point challenge live from New York University. Plus a look at player of the year, Marcus Camby. That's coming up after this one before Kentucky UMass. Jim, I'm a made free throw. The reason Syracuse is picking up full court is the change in the rule that allows once the ball is thrown in bounds, the clock does not start until somebody touches the five-second count used to be in play. And, and so therefore, somebody had to touch it within five. No longer the case. And that's why Syracuse picked up a little bit earlier. See, Sims is coming here, so they can't roll the ball inbounds. So nice Paul move. now with nine second half points. He really came through in this half. Sapola and Bergen. Wilson three-pointer. They started much too early to go straight threes. At the three-minute mark, they took desperation shots. Jones never went for that rebound. Syracuse is going to be heading to Monday night's championship game. The Big East absent from the Final Four since 1989. They had 35 bids in all as a conference since Seton Hall went in Seattle and made it all the way to the final against Michigan. And there is Russell Walters following out. Jimmy's a songwriter. One of the titles of his songs is I Ain't Going Home. But you know what? I'm afraid that uh, he's going to head home. And he may uh, find that journey to be an awful lonely highway, Billy. That was the title of his album. Fouled out with 10 points. You know, he talked about he talked about having the right perspective. He said, gee, I don't know about going to that final four. It's turkey season in Mississippi. Yeah, I'm going to miss four days of hunting. Did a terrific job, though. A great role player for this team. How about that, Billy, though, for... Syracuse, the Big East, it's had a hard time getting back to this promised land during the 90s, and this was the one team this year. They had three programs, Villanova, UConn, Georgetown, that many felt you know, might be here. The multiple. No one expected Syracuse. Wilson with a three. Timeout, their final one, with 107 remaining. 73-61. Well, Jimmy, 21 to 3. That's the difference in the turnovers today in this ball game. You cannot win a ball game with that stat jumping in your face, and that's what Mississippi State did to themselves. Some very faulty ball handling. And some solid play by Syracuse. I mean, the, the three turnovers. Yeah, Syracuse is, is, on the other. Is right. just as impressive or more impressive than the 21. Right, they have. There's number four. 15 assists and four turnovers today for Syracuse. Great ball handling decisions. Wilson. Vampire keeps it alive. Their sharpshooter gets another turn. That's two straight for him. Two straight trips. He's in a three. Got a foul here. You got to take stop that clock as quickly as possible. And here's why Jones doesn't want to pick up his fourth, but does. Oh, 35 seconds to go. Richard Williams, when his team advanced out of Lexington last week, he wanted everyone to know back home in Mississippi, especially all the support from the high school coaches, that he was thinking of them. He said, I'm especially proud of them, many of whom deserve to be here more than I. They just never got the chance I did. We're playing with their players. I hope they are as proud of us as I am proud of them. As proud of them as I am. Well, he made a great tribute to David Whitney, the great coach from Alcorn State. Said, I used to go over and watch his practices and know how important it was to how he put his team together. Man devoted a lot of time before he became a premier head coach. Time to the game of basketball to improve his ability to teach it. This really is a, a Mississippi team with 10 players from their own state. One from Tennessee, that man who goes out, and two from Alabama. 16 points for Dante Jones. That extinguished the inferno, Jeff. That's what they needed today, and they did not get it. Syracuse allows that ball to be rolled in. Reef Snyder. Well, they a couple of turnovers in the last minute. Not many before that, Dan Pierce slam with 18 seconds remaining. 
Well, that was a good pass by Reese Snyder just to, to the opponent as opposed to his teammate because he did have a nice fast break opportunity. Jimmy Beheim almost went to a Final Four as a player in 66. Jim, I was there in 75 when he came as an assistant coach with Ray, Roy Danforth. Got knocked off by a Kentucky team in the semifinals there. And of course, we all know about that key smart shot that set him down in that uh, very tough loss to Bob Knight's Indiana Club. But it looks like he's back in the great territory for Monday night. And tell me, Syracuse alumni <laughs> won't be a tough ticket in this area. Like it wasn't already, you know. And Jim sits over there as if he's totally unconcerned. You know how excited he is inside. A great competitor. Jones. That was a magical run for Mississippi State to the Final Four, but no retreat, no surrender, no excuse. Syracuse is going to the Monday night final. They count the three. Eight tenths of a second up there. Mississippi State's going to let Wallace get it in, and Jones is going to shake hands with him. 77 69. Two Cinderella's. Everyone wondered which one would be there Monday night. It'll be the Orangemen of Syracuse. A four seed in the championship game for the first time ever. Syracuse will play the winner of Kentucky UMass coming up shortly. When we come back, we'll join Pat O'Brien.